This is going to be a very short video in which I want to show you how I practice and how I refine my technique by using lots and lots and lots of repetition. Now, if you can see in this bit here, um, I'm repeating this constantly on purpose because the notes are fine, but I want to bring my attention to each finger. Okay, and specifically, and this will really work if you're, whether you're a beginner or even a professional, the fourth finger on piano technique, we call this the fourth finger or the ring finger, you know, for normal people. <laughs> okay, this is a really weak finger. Okay, and usually, at least in my case, I have lots of uh, weaknesses and troubles in this because this doesn't lift as quick as I want. So there's always little things in here. And what I'm doing here, I'm actually repeating this in order to for me to bring my attention to the forefinger and try to lift it a little bit more, a little bit quicker. When I go A, G, there, I'm never happy with that. So that's why I'm, I keep repeating and repeating and, re and repeating. So in this little part here, okay, it's just that four notes, B, A, G, and F sharp, and then back up, okay? There's no particular issue that I can find, okay? But there's something really interesting that I actually found by looking at the video. There. As I'm playing, my finger, my fourth finger, you know, I'm hyper flexible, so my fingers are really bendy, okay? So that's the way I am, okay? So I always try to keep my fingers as round as possible within reason, okay? Uh, but sometimes I forget. So in the video, it starts, finger starts flat, and then I, f I remember about it, I'm like, oh, there. See how I go from flat to round, okay? There's nothing wrong in playing flat, nothing wrong. I played flat for like 15 years and then I changed my technique because I wanted to change, okay? But this is interesting because uh, it can tell you that when you repeat things, it's not that you're thinking about something else and you're just putting yourself in autopilot. You're actually thinking actively about what you're doing. So you're assessing and you're changing on the go, on the fly, make sense? Pretty interesting, I guess. <laughs> So in this new part, okay, it's it's a different idea that I'm bringing into my practice. And what I'm doing is I'm actually changing up the rhythm from the original piece that I have. The original rhythm goes right, just a bunch of sixteen notes. What I'm doing now is I'm holding one note long, and then the rest is just quick, 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 and then long again. So. And by doing this, what you're doing is you're making the piece harder. So you're actually going to be able to spot, oh, look, when I do this note, this happens. Oh, no, my finger is not working properly here. Or it's like I'm not lifting enough or whatever. You know, you're going to be able to see your flaws if you do like this. It's like if you're staying at, this, at the surface, it's all nice and beautiful. Okay, But then as you start to go down to the bottom of the sea, you're gonna see a new different world full of fish and full of corals and whatever, okay? So that's what you wanna do as, you know, it's a weird analogy, but essentially that's what you're doing. So in this part, it's a new kind of idea, a new approach in which I extend the number of notes. Right, so I have more quick notes before I actually hit the long note, make sense? And I just play around with this. Okay, but I'm always, the idea, the approach is always the same. Long, quick, 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 or quick, 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 long. The idea is, is still the same. It's just whether you have one note um, or a bunch of, you know, sequence of notes, it doesn't really matter, it's, but the approach is still the same. Hmm, that was nice. That was cool. That's that's okay, because I have to deal with C and B, which I'm never happy about and probably I will never be until I die. <laughs> See, did you hear that? I slowed down on purpose do -de -do -de -do, to bring more awareness into my fingers and to my brain, you know, do -de -do -de -do, and I do that, you know. It's actually very smart to slow down 
to think, to ingrain things in your playing, into your fingers, into your brain, and into your ears. Right? So you got the point, okay? So it's basically ideas to make the thing that you're playing harder so when you go back and play the original one it's like ha oh, this is a piece of cake that's a quick video to hopefully give you more ideas about how to practice remember it's all about how you practice and how can you go deeper into your playing and if you do this little exercises you will actually go deeper into your playing because otherwise again you stay in the surface and you're never going to see the beauties of the bottom of the sea make sense okay so if you want to know more have more exercises more tips download the free ebooks that i have here below in the link and also my mentorship program is closed for September, but it will open again in January. So if you missed it, you can click here below, apply, we'll have a call, I'll assess your playing. It's totally free, no obligation. And I'll give you practical exercises that will help with sound, technique, practicing, tonguing and whatnot, okay? But essentially the mentorship is about me holding you by the hand and telling you, hey, look, come with me and I'll show you exactly how to do it so you don't waste any time and you can actually progress way faster than whatever you could do by yourself on YouTube. Make sense? Okay. Give a like to the video and subscribe if you are enjoying it and I will see you soon. Bye.